Slim, slim. And sharp. All these additives we've added on over the years. We've cursed our own self. But let it be known, let it be said, let it be done that the bread and wine is not folk are eating and drinking and communing at home and when they got to the time for to come in and around God's supper time, they were already drunk when they got to the church. Come on somebody. We're not drunk on the bread and the wine. But we drunk on that sinful wine. We're drunk on sin. We're drunk on uncleanliness. We're drunk on a whole lot of stuff that God is not pleased with. And later in the chapter, he reminds us. The reason, the whole time, if you want to be drunk, get drunk on the Holy Spirit. If you want to get real, real drunk, and you want to keep on drinking, get in the Word of God. If you want to get higher than you've ever been before, I dare you to read about what Jesus said he would do for you if you would just obey and be obedient to his will. Is there somebody here who may want to get high on the word of God? There ought to be somebody who ought to be able to get into the word. God, have mercy. Take me to the next verse. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Just that verse. We're going to take one verse at a time. Come on, somebody. Back up to that verse. As Dee clearly said, what? Don't you have a place to eat at your own house? Can't you do this in your own house? Can you really have communion in your own house? No, you can't. But they were using this particular time frame and the courses, and they were mixing the two of them. So when they came into the holies of holiness, they didn't have the right reason for doing what they needed to do. Can I get a witness? In other words, they were gathering for the wrong reason. Look at somebody real quick. What's your reason, neighbor? Now, there, that we could stay there for a little bit. Some come to church because they don't want to miss what's going on. <laughs> And I'm not talking about the word of God. They want to see who came to church. Who had what on. How many were in church. And there are even some here now that they come faithfully here. But they're transmitting. Oh help me Holy Ghost. They're transmitting what went on. Rather than the word. They're just transmitting. Well how was church at First Baptist this morning? Well the pastor really busted us out. And the transmitting should be in the word and the word only. How was church? Well, if anybody asks you that here lately, just tell them they ought to come and see for themselves. Amen. Would you do that? Let that be, not a smart aleck answer, but hey, come and find out for yourself. Because see, I could tell you what the pastor preached about, but it ain't doing you no good if you wasn't there to hear the word itself. And certainly, even if you told them to go home and read it, they're not going to read it. They just wanted to be nosy. And it's nothing wrong with being nosy if they would go home and read it. Can I get a witness? Amen. What reason, what, for what reason are we really coming up into the place of worship? And we have to ask ourselves not only the question, but we must stay on a personal basis that if I came to lift up the name of Jesus, then that's the reason I came. If I'm lifting him up, I'm doing all right. If I keep on lifting him up, I can do better. Lord, he said, if I be lifted up, that he would do what? worrying about the crowd the crowd is not going to save your soul God brought you here to do something personally yourself he made you for a reason not for just a season come on put your hands together one more time I I listen at the deacon reading it and in the course of as he was reading If you come to praise the Lord, 
in a place of worship, then there shouldn't be a problem. The deacon's getting you started in the morning. Come on, somebody. I'm taking a break because I got to think on this one. And allow the Lord to anoint me while he's doing it. Because see, if you came to praise God because you've been communing with him all week, there's no way anybody can keep you in your seat when it comes time for testimony service. So in other words, what, what I'm trying to say, and, and if you hear it wrong, good. If you hear it right, it's still good. When you come into the place of worship, the joy of the Lord is still your strength, as it was all week long. When you come into the place of worship, there's still, you still have a reason or something to shout about. When you come into the place of worship, there ought to be a word or something on your lip, a clapping in your hand, a stomping in your feet, a joy down on the inside that some reason you just can't keep your seat. But have you, I heard, I heard Dean Burns, uh, everybody, well, is there, I wonder if there's anybody else here that has a testimony. Then he'll look around and pause for a couple minutes. And then somebody will jump up just out of courtesy so it won't look bad. Mm -hmm. But there's no way that if you have Jesus, that you can keep him to yourself. So what has happened? We have slipped into just what this passage is talking about. We've got into a dimension here in a place of worship where we are trying to cradle or control what God does as we worship him. Come on, somebody. Some fall asleep. Some get grouchy. Some are still rolling their eyes. Some are still thinking about who they were with last night. Others are thinking what, what they could have had, didn't have. Others are thinking about, well, it's cheaper to keep her. Or whatever the case. And the whole thing is about what is the true reason that you came to worship God? And there must be a reason other than to fantasize your neighbor or your friend. Because, see, the purpose of coming to a place of worship is to magnify the Lord. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. Now, now I, 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 I'm trying not to stay too long on one verse, but you've got to understand this passage. Because each Sunday that we cover this passage of Scripture, we've got to get away from the content that is only symbolic and think about only the spiritual need of why we're following this commandment. That's why later in the verse, the Bible demands that we examine ourselves. And the examination is about why are you taking it? Because it's for any other reason. Because see, you're not going to be without sin. You're not sinless. None of us are. Come on, get quiet on me if you want to. The examination is why are you taking it? Read the next verse. Lord have mercy. Help. For I have received of the Lord that which Where did he get this from? Lord. Where did he get it from? Lord. He didn't make it up himself. See, the, let, no, you're good. The reason Paul is saying this, he said, For I have received of the Lord. In other words, Paul wasn't there. At the Last Supper. So this is only what? A confirmation from God. He was not there. A revelation that only God can give. He said, for I have received from the Lord. In other words, the Holy Ghost spoke to him as he was speaking to the people. Go ahead, sir. That which... Also, I delivered unto you. He gave it to me. Now I'm giving it to you. Amen. That Come the on. Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Jesus. 
I've received it from God. Now, Doris, I'm giving it to you. Huh? I received a revelation from God. Amen. Now I'm giving it to you directly. And basically across the Bible, many of us run to the book of Revelations to get the early story, but the quick story and the fast story. We want to know when the end is coming so we can hurry and get our act together. But you need to start at Genesis and work your way to Revelation. Because if you don't, you'll miss a blessing on the way. Paul was giving them what true communion was all about here. And, and this verse really gives us a true example. And as I said earlier, the revelation could only come from God. Have you ever been in a circumstances or situation where things have happened Something has happened and you wasn't there for the event, but yet you already knew. Some folk call it prophecy. Many people call it a lot of things. But God just don't play. Sunday school lesson made that evident in another area this morning. He's got something to tell you. He's going to tell you through his preachers, his prophets, and his saints. Now, something different if you don't want to hear it. Come on now. Go ahead, oh, help me somebody. Go ahead. Go ahead, I dare not stand alone anywhere in this pulpit without Jesus. Because I realize and know that I'm standing, not the carpet, Come on. but I'm standing on holy ground. Yes. So I don't need to use Jesus to get to you for anything. God needs it. Anything he's got to tell you, he'll tell him himself. He'll, in other words, God has a way of talking and giving revelation to his people through his servant. But unless you want to follow what God is telling well, I don't know about that. I don't know if I want to believe him. And we done got to the point where now where we sanitize the preacher before he even opens his mouth. That's because we want to find an excuse for not hearing the word of God. The pastor told y'all, four years ago to come on in out of the rain in the valley. Come on in out of the rain. It's time to get your heart right. Came in for a while, went back out. Come on, somebody. This is not a shouting, knock down, drag out sermon. It's about the symbolic reason we do this. And we do it, and I'm trying not to get that damnation on your soul. Because if you, ah, glory, if you're doing it for the wrong reason, just to be doing it. The Bible says you, rather you didn't take it at all. He didn't say don't take it, but if it's not for a godly reason, any other reason is wrong. And Paul makes it clear here, without questioning anything, you can't be drunk. You can't overeat, whether it be bread. Or milk and bread. Doesn't matter. What you're eating is not necessarily the contents itself. But it's the word of God. Come on, put your hands together. You need the word of God. You've got to have the word of God. You must have the word of God. Paul opens up our eyes. God, how many times have I read this scripture? Paul is saying that. I received it, and now I'm giving it to you. He was basically wanting to make it clear. It's not coming from me. This is coming from the Lord. That's a hard pill for us to swallow in this day and time. Because we blame it on the Zachary Thames. Amen. On the Eddie Longs and many others that fall for some reason.